my shoe uh, catalog has always been really eccentric or really aesthetically more advanced than probably you know other shoes that have been out for a while and i wanted to have more of a generational staple in the shoe design game than just it's just cool to look at or it's just cool to look at on the wall or you have these colorways like i want it all i'm ben natanko Nike basketball senior football designer and this is a Kyrie six Every time we design a shoe in Nike basketball, it starts with innovation and the technology. And then you kind of blend that with style and, and art. I've been with Nike for 11 years and I've worked on four Kyries. I'm always challenging him to think a little bit more science. He's always challenging me to think more art. And to strike that balance, I think that was the most challenging thing. I came to him with a concept that was a little more future, a little more out there, a little more progressive. And it just didn't align with his vision at that time. He came back with just like examples of shoes he'd worn in the past and he liked the way it felt. The, the sensation of the collar foam, how it looked on, on the shelf. So we kind of went back and forth on defining what, what items and what details to keep and what details to magnify. It has like the finishing and the feel of like a 90s basketball shoe and it has all the details that we're looking for that has some of those nostalgic feeling, but then when you put your feet inside the shoe, it has a sensation of like, oh, it feels like a modern basketball shoe. It's not old foam or old rubber or old airbags. It's like modernized and repurposed for the new age basketball player. I have to push Ben. I have to push Ben. Let's go, come on, Ben. Like get out of your comfort zone. Let's do something different. And I'm glad that he's here with me, but I, I've had to push Ben to be more of a limitless driver in his design process. When it's a okay from the both of us, that means that we're doing dope, like dope shit. It took 18 months to design the Kyrie 6. From inception, like the very first sketch, to prototyping the first one, the second one, it must have been like seven to eight different prototypes. To gain insight on how Kyrie plays, we watch a lot of his films, a lot of his games. Um, even talk with his professional trainer. The way he can maneuver and rotate his ankle and foot is out of this world. And I think that gives him like the extra advantage over everyone else. So for years, we've been trying to create shoes that provided the, the things he needs to play that way. Where my feet land in the amount of turning and twisting that I do on the court, start and stopping and you know, game to game and 82 games, plus the off season, zoom airbag, putting much more of just a, when you land, it just feels like you're landing right on a soft, soft, soft surface. We reused the Air Zoom Turbo from the Kyrie 5. We heard great things about how it feels on court. Air Zoom Turbo is our internal zoom bag that you can see here on the inside of the shoe. Airbags are uh, Nike's innovation to help provide impact protection, whether it's located in the heel for heel strikers or forefoot for uh, forefoot responsiveness. For Kyrie, um, he's mainly on his forefoot a lot, and we wanna make sure that under his forefoot, we have a responsive cushioning solution for him. The cushioning is not uh, a plush sensation, it's more responsive, so bounce back and give you more of a pop. It's like the biggest, end cap or like the biggest zoom back we made for him where look at the Kyrie 1 to the Kyrie 5 and 6 is 240% larger than the first version. And so we're still carrying on that theme and taking that over to the next shoe. So he could be responsive and quick in all directions without losing a step. So we got we continue that uh, innovation for this one also. They came upon like just the six were like, hey man, we noticed that your shoes are like this parallel with the ground and you're not getting grip and traction in key areas. How do you feel about us just like examining that little area and maybe like addressing that differently? And so the idea of like adding grip beyond just the bottom and the sidewall, but also now on the top. We want to give him a heightened sensation of court feel. So you can feel the court from this angle, this angle, and this angle. I found this shin guard from Global Football that had the little nubs on them. I thought it was very intriguing and interesting. It provided grip, but also in a modern way. 
Uh, when we showed Kyrie, they was like, hey, what do you think of like adding some of this low level of detail to provide grip for you with the resistance around the foot? And he grabbed it and kind of like rubbed it on the table. Said, yep, it's good for me. So we took that notion of like, all right, something about this is interesting. How do we bring this to life in Kyrie? Having those micro texture on top of the shoe versus just on the bottom of the shoe, providing him even more grip for him to maneuver even more, uh, was something that we thought was really compelling and new and innovative. Adding a strap in a basketball shoe has been, has been kind of within a Nike basketball portfolio for so many years. Well, I asked him, hey, where do you want the most support for your shoe? And he placed his hand on the Kyrie 5 and said, I want to continue to have support in this area. And so I told him, well, that means that you want a midfoot strap. He's like, yeah, but can you do it in a way where it's not just a normal strap? And so what we did was like, we looked at other runners that has well-executed strap execution, like the Presto, where they have those cages in the quarter. The cage is not just stopping like at the bite line, at the, you know, the upper portion. The cage goes beyond and into the midsole. And what that does is kind of like hugging more of the arch further than what you would have a normal strap does. The strap was going to be strictly for lockdown. It wasn't going to be for, you know, just to have it on the shoe. Our athletes, even our work testers, when they put the shoe on, like, oh, this strap is really engaging. It's almost like you have a belt loop, you have one extra hole making it extra tight. You can kind of like feel the strap really pulling on the arch and giving the support you need for him to be quicker on the court. The most important thing in this shoe compared to the others is literally just comfortability. I imagined what the upper would be like on a Jordan 2 on a basketball shoe that was evolved into 2019. Just imagine having a shoe that you slip on and you slip off. And it's just the most comfortable thing that you're putting on. That's exactly what went into it. You know, when you go to design school or you design like on your own or with your team, you always think about like how it looks on the outside. And he's challenging us to start thinking, man, think about me and how I put the shoe on. Like think of it designing inward then move outwardly. Like starting with how it feels along my collar and along my ankle. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? Can you tell us more? He's like, yo, in high school, I used to wear Jordan 2s and play all the time. And the way this padding feels against my ankle, it was just the right amount of padding, the right amount of texture. Can we bring some of that vibe back? And so our team went back and investigated what was in the collar foam of the AJ2. So those are kind of details that we looked at, like, ah, oh, we didn't, from an athlete perspective, give us insights that, dang, we didn't see that initially. And I think we end up with, um, with a combination of something that feels and performs like a modern day basketball shoe, but has like an old school flavor to it. Something he always tells me is like, yo, I'm like an old school soul with new school flavor. I think that Kyrie, the way he plays on the court, is almost like he's flickering already, the way he moves and maneuver on the court. And we feel like the materials and colors can really feel like that, even on a still object. Like, if you look at some of these, there's particular detail on the shoe that is moving and dynamic as opposed to like just being a static thing. And we wanted that to feel like that on the shelf of the store. You walk in the store, a kid is like, dang. That thing was like moving as I'm moving around it. I feel like I feel like this shoe is Kyrie, like the Kyrie version of a shoe. We have a lot of colors on here and that's on purpose. We thought about like what is special to Kyrie. And as he traveled across the world, there are cities and places that speaks to him. This started where just a lot was going on in, in terms of my life where the next few months I couldn't foresee things happening. So a lot of the symbols, a lot of the names on it, um, you know, the connections to different cities. Uh, it just it just all started to make sense. This is NYC. If you look at the, the graphic within the Aridesa and you capture like the city of New York, like the subway station and the bridges. LA has definitely got the beach vibes. You can look at it, some of the color palettes based on just the sand and the beach culture of LA. Right down to this trap has these little speckles that represents the sand green. Houston is having this really in your face gold detail to the strap and having Houston on the side, just playing up the whole grill, grill culture out there. This one in my hand is a special one, it's Miami. And it's my hometown, but also it's, a, it's significant to Kyrie. Also, he has family out there. But we took inspiration from the Art Basel and Wynwood walls 
and like all the artwork and graffiti that's really street, but done in a really cool way and took those ideas and brought the life through having it be more of an iridescent finish. Some of the colorways were inspired by like adding a hidden message or hidden graphic on the shoe that only would surface if you had black lights over it. And so that's what this dart works, kind of more like, hey, the shoe lives beyond just the basketball court, but also like how Kyrie always challenges us to think beyond the court. When you're on the path of self-mastery or enlightenment, you're going to come into contact with different symbols, different theologies, philosophies, you know, religions, um, ideologies, and all of it is just knowledge. And when you meet knowledge with understanding, then that thus turns into wisdom. The all-seeing eye graphic uh, was first introduced in the Kyrie floor. It was more like a discovery element behind the tongue. Um, that was a late ad for him, from a request made by Kyrie to add in. We added that detail thinking that maybe it was just to kind of start, we'll see where it goes. But then quickly it was recognized by a lot of people. Hey, what does this mean? Is he with a different type of energy this time or what's the meaning behind it? And Kyrie, as always, is always deeper than just meets the eye kind of guy. Uh, he's always challenging everyone to think beyond. And like, that's what the all seeing eye is about. Like being fully transparent, um, look beyond just what's provided in front of you. I've just watched other great artists that have come before me do the same thing where they've implemented knowledge and their understanding of the way the world works and the way the universe works. And the symbols hold power. And when you understand that that power is on the inside and when you see it and it resonates amongst kids and adults, then if I can do that through not only just playing basketball and just through my art as well, then that's, that's why it's on there. You know, I want those kids that are in seventh grade to ask questions about, you know, what is a triangle in the eye? What is all seeing eye? What is a healer's hand? So back here is like a hand symbol with the eye in the center. He's all about healing the world and healing the universe. And so there's just a healer's hand that we saw this symbol and then we kind of trapped the eye in there. And there's some other little nuggets throughout the shoe that has all seeing eye, like even the bottom. The traction element, there's a center pivot point where everything's kind of focused centrally along there, but then it kind of expands from there. And you kind of see, if you put two shoes together left and right, you kind of get like two eyeballs, but he's like got eyes all over the court kind of deal, so. This art means a lot to me. And to see the youth pick up on these things and ask questions, that's the best thing. It's the best thing. You know, I was taught to be kind of one and one dimensional in this box, you know, and you're like, I don't want to be in that box anymore. And when you start getting in uncomfortable zones, then it, it'll start to, it'll start to align with things that were always there to begin with. I've been crafting, you know, this art for a, a while now, you know, this creative form that I go, you know, hours upon hours of watching, you know, observing um, and doing. I want to be one of those pioneers that, um, you know, really came into the game of basketball and got outside of comfort zone and built something that was for the culture that, you know, was respected not only just in sports, but also lifestyle. We're always focused on innovation and it has to be a performance basketball shoe, no matter what, hands down. And then how we finish the shoe, how we have details come to life really caters to our younger consumer and even some of our older consumers. Man, the younger generation, they are your fortune tellers. They will tell you whether or not the culture is moving them emotionally, like empathetically, like symbolically, but they'll be your tellers. And I use that, be the high school kids, the middle school kids, and the kids that are gonna keep growing in size and following you along your whole entire journey. So I just use references. I use, you know, my daughter. I use, you know, she's only three, you know, like, but if I know that it looks really dope on her foot, then I know it'll look really dope on a six-year-old's foot. It's not just for kids or it's not just for the ultimate, like, hooper, but it's everything in between. Look at the SpongeBob pack. 
You know, we've heard consumers from an age of eight to all the way to 45 and everything in between wanting that collection you know, because the product stands for being a high performance basketball shoe, but also has these elements of culture that's embedded and it's relevant. And so we feel like that's how we want to have Kyrie's product to feel like. For this shoe specifically, I just hammered home on you know, other great heroes of mine, you know, such as MJ. You know, I wanted to show a lot of respect towards the OGs that really put forth a lot of the shoes that were generational, like, changers. What Tinker has done with the Jordan brand, like, just the Jordan collection, like, there was, like, a magical, black, like, balance of he can wear it and get buckets. But at the same time, you can wear it to a business meeting. I wanted to have something where the designers that came before me were like, hey, this kid is on to something. And if he didn't play basketball from this point on, I could transition into becoming a shoe designer of not just a basketball shoe, but of lifestyle for culture. You have signature athletes that others may feel like they deserve it. Others may feel like they don't, they do. I want more signature athletes and more individuals taking more of the creative risk outside of just basketball shoes. Like I, I, I'm an advocate for that. Basketball aside, like I design dope stuff and I wanna continue to do that. And I wanna continue to see others be those type of designers where like, yo, let's have a competition amongst each other as a team. Let's keep helping each other out. Let's keep pushing the, pushing the threshold on what it could be to be a designer or be a signature athlete.